made things so that you could see an authentic picture of things as they would have been made in that time. This tomb, we started on using hand tools all the time, and it was too much work. It was a huge amount of work to make a tomb like this, to dig it. It would have taken generations, and it was a generational project. Passed on through your family, through the years, and hired many people to work on. And we wanted to be able to show it to you, and not to our guests, in 2045. So we finished it up using machine tools. We're going to show this tomb to you. Because it was so much work to make a tomb like this, only rich people. Shalom. How's it going? Say shalom to our villager. Shalom. 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 Only rich people would be buried in a tomb like this. Normal people were buried in the ground. Burial was really important. We read early on in the Old Testament about the burial of Sarah. Abraham, Moses, David, many other biblical figures were buried in ceremonies described in the Bible. And particularly in the centuries leading up to Jesus' life, people were thinking a lot more about resurrection. And people in that era often believed, and indeed into the Middle Ages many Christians believed, you couldn't be raised from the dead if your body wasn't preserved in some form. So burial was really important. If you were buried in a tomb like this, you would have two burials. Your first burial was within 24 hours of your death, in the village where you died. This is probably where you lived your whole life. Your family would wash your body, anoint you with oil, maybe put perfume and spices on you, and then set you in the tomb, which you would probably have to yourself for one year. Over the course of that time, all of your flesh would rot away. What would be left of you would just be your bones, and your family would come back for your second burial. They would bury your bones in a rectangular stone box about the size of what my hands are doing here, called an ossuary, a house of bones. And an ossuary is about the length of the longest bone in the human body, a femur. And they would just set your bones in this compact little box and slide it into cut areas, niches, in the sides of the tomb. So you could bury lots of people together in these niches to have a whole big family in there. This is referred to in the Old Testament as being gathered under your forefathers. You're going to be with those who came before you and better. We like to tell a joke here at the tomb. So Jesus is buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man, fulfilling prophecy that he would be buried among the rich. And Joseph's a follower, a believer. His family probably aren't. And they come to him and they say, Joseph! What are you doing? Why did you give up the family tomb? Now we won't be able to use it for a whole year. This is expensive. And Joseph says, don't worry, don't worry. He told me he would only need it for the weekend. <laughs> this can also shed a little bit of light on something more serious. At one point, Jesus is talking to a young man and says, come and follow me. And the young man says, please, can I bury my father? And Jesus says, no, let the dead bury the dead. You come and follow me. And on the one hand, Jesus is doing, you know, important ministry, and the young man's needed, and maybe that's enough. But it's also a difficult passage. If your father has just passed away, especially since the Jews buried within 24 hours, you can't have a day to be with your family and bury your father. It just doesn't seem very much like Jesus. One very possible reading of this story that's perfectly consistent with the language they use is that he's asking for the second burial. He's asking... Please let me wait three months, six months, nine months so I can bury my father's bones a year out from when he died. He's already died. And Jesus' answer, of course, makes more sense in that context. Less, less, uh, less harsh. Also, if you think about it statistically, what's the chance he died in the last day versus in the last year? It's a much more likely interpretation given the language and the character of Jesus. We're going to carry on. You can take a quick peek in there. Huh?